Hey guys, this is Dr. Ruscio. I'm here with Harmon or Harmonji. I'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit here. Okay. Um, and man, we've had quite the road over the past yeah, we have. four months. <laughs> Do you want to tell people a little bit about what you came in with and your experience? Um, so actually I started off reading your book because I just had insane brain fog. I went to like a million doctors, had a lot of food intolerances. Oh, I didn't know all that part of the background. Yeah, I went, okay. to, I went to seven doctors mm. from at Kaiser and... Um, I went online, I started searching up, I found like Canada and SIBO and stuff, mm -hmm. and I actually found you on Yelp, whereas, which is where I found your book. Huh. So I started, yeah, so I started reading your Thank book. Thank you, Yelp. <laughs> yeah. So I started reading, reading your book, and um, I went kind of through your book, and mm -hmm. then that's kind of when I realized I need a little bit more help than right. what the book had, and mm -hmm. that's when I contacted your office, and I came in with insane brain fog depression which is I was a really happy person so that was new for me yeah you seem constitutionally happy when you came in you seem like a happy person but um you, know, you cried during our first visit and yeah. I, could, I could tell that you were really just kind of debilitated by I think the brain fog was the most detrimental symptom right yeah that was the worst for me yeah. um yeah I couldn't even concentrate at times mm. um so then yeah I came to you and then you kind of helped me step by step and it's been about let's say three or four months now mm -hmm. and your brain fog is it's gone. pretty much gone yeah and your reactivity to food yeah pretty much gone uh so my heart broke for you when you when you first came in because i could see how and as as someone who suffered from brain fog myself i understand how it, it just debilitates you because yeah. right? you're at work or you're and you're saying things and you're doing things but in the back of your head you're saying I really don't feel like I'm making any sense and I really don't feel like I can concentrate and I really don't feel like I'm um, fully mentally present mm -hmm. and so I, I get how just frustrating it is and it didn't take a tremendous amount to get things moving in the right direction we modified your diet mm -hmm. there were some food triggers we used some antimicrobials we used some gut healing compounds but you said something that I thought was interesting, which I wanted to showcase in particular, which was, you know, I encourage you to kind of expand your diet yeah. as we were working into this process. Because I had the sense that you were kind of working yourself into this, you know, restricted dietary corner. And do you want to share people with, with people what you had said to me? Just now? Yeah. So um, I was only eating chicken and carrots. And then, pretty, pretty restrictive. <laughs> and then um, last time I came to see you, you told me it was okay to try things even if I had a slight reaction to them. Mm -hmm. And that opened so many doors for me because I kind of lost that fear of having even yeah. a small reaction. Right. And now I'm eating so much. <laughs> and I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you were, you were so concerned about having a reaction to food that if you only had a slight reaction that in and of itself wouldn't have been that bad. You mm -hmm. got so worried about that reaction that you exacerbated it and made it worse. Yeah, Is that kind exactly. of fair to say? Yeah. So this is one of the reasons why I take a soft stance on dietary restrictions because people take the hard stance on dietary restrictions literally and they get really worried. And, and so this is, you know, these are some of the living, breathing examples of why I'm not super dogmatic about any kind of dietary restriction because people need a little bit of flexibility and also why I encourage people and clinicians not to over exaggerate their diagnosis because I think people have the tendency to go to the worst possible interpretation of anything. Yeah. Right. So as the clinician, if you make that worse, <laughs> you're really exacerbating the situation Whereas if you can be a bit more conservative and cautious with the mentality or, or the prognosis or the, the picture that you paint, you can help prevent that sort of situation where I think you were not feeling bad from food, but maybe you were noticing like a slight blow and yeah. you were probably just freaking out inside. And I can see the things that you would think like, oh my God, does this mean I have inflammation in my gut, inflammation in my brain? And you start just freaking out and that stress is really unhealthy. Yeah. And now you're eating more foods. Mm -hmm. You yeah. had gluten-free pizza the other day. I did, and it was really good, and I didn't have a reaction to it. So. Good, good. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with people, uh, a couple of key things. Some, you know, well-constructed antimicrobials. We use the antimicrobials that we use in the book, uh, BiotiClear 1A and uh, 2A, combined with some gut healing compounds, some adrenal support, 
um, essentially kind of like a FODMAP restricted diet, but without really tight yeah. boundaries and using her response to, to dictate what to eat and what not to eat. And it's only taken, really, it's been about three, four months, and you're pretty much out of the woods. We're going to follow up one or two more times to make sure that we maintain this trajectory, but you've done awesome. Thanks. <laughs> I am really happy for you because I could see how distressed you were when you first came in. And is there anything else you want to share with people in close? Um, well, first of all, you're a great doctor. Thank um, you. I've trusted you completely, and you. you're just so knowledgeable. I just want to tell people, don't be scared, and you know, <laughs> come in. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Well, well, thank. You. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you sharing your story, and um, you know, I almost wish we had done a pre-post because you could, you know, you could see, you could feel how, and that's why I gave you a hug at the end of our first visit because I, I just, I, I felt yeah. for you because I could see how much it was it was really just affecting your life in a negative way. So I'm so happy that you're feeling better. So, and thank, thank you. you. <laughs> awesome.